Hello everybody. The Warriors barely hang on to win the game against the Celtics. And at the end of the game, there was a key defensive stop where Andre Iguodala got his patented swipe down steal. So naturally, I wanted to do an explain one play about that. But then Andre in the postgame interview did the explain one play for me. So uh, I'm just going to run what he said and then maybe make some supplementary comments. They asked him about that play with the steal, and he said, I jumped earlier in the quarter, and Tatum euroed me before I jumped. You get two and a half, three and a half, four and a half steps now, and it was a beautiful move. So just timing up different guys, and you just remember stuff. It's kind of like a boxing match. You know, Floyd Mayweather, you know, he's using the first two or three rounds. He's just calculating every time. He's just putting the data in his computer, in his brain, and he's just remembering how things work. And uh, they kind of got their euro step, and, and Jalen's been really good at attacking with that. And um, I closed out to keep him off the three-point line, and then he goes in. My help's on my on his right side and he euros around him there's no place but for the ball to come back to the left side and uh, just put your hand where the ball is going to be and you got to get stop. okay so andre was definitely in good form tonight just in case you don't remember the celtics stars jalen brown and jason tatum use a lot of euro stepping andre is saying that they kept on euro stepping during the game and he started to remember that move and started to get the timing down of their moves so let's go back so first of all he was talking about a play where Jason Tatum euroed him. This is a pretty clean move where Tatum came up for the pass. Damian Lee tried to intercept and then really sweet spin move and now he's got an open lane to the basket, right? So the low closest man to the basket, weak side, the side opposite the ball usually rotates. So Andre rotates and Jason Tatum has picked up his dribble. So Andre figures, all right, he's got to shoot it now. So he times it so that he jumps up right for the shot. But instead of shooting, Jason Tatum is going to do what they call a Euro step, where he takes one step, two steps. I know Andre said they take four steps, but I think that's an exaggeration. He's going to take two steps to get around Andre for the sweet little layup. And here, if you hear the sound of gears whirring, it's Andre thinking, all right, I'm not going to get beat by that move again. He's darn Euro steps. So then when the game went into crunch time, we had Jalen Brown, the other Boston J star, driving with time running down under a minute left. And he also shows that he can use the Euro. Here he picks up his dribble. It looks like he's doomed. He has to shoot, but instead he's going to take one step, two steps, one, two, two long strides. That's just such a, a nice long Euro two step and he's just going to keep on soaring past Draymond for this sweet layup. Andre Iguodala now is on guard for these Euro steps. If you think it looks like Steph is dribbling mad, you'd be right because in the play right before that Jalen Brown Euro step, Steph had a open layup that he just blew that would have pretty much put the game away so he is pretty pissed he definitely wants to redeem himself the warriors want to pick on the time lord robert williams because he's the biggest slowest guy out there and damian lee thinks that he's being guarded by robert williams so he wants to come up and set the screen for steph to force robert williams into the play and then steph can pick on him but you might notice when damian lee comes up to set the screen Williams immediately stays with Otto Porter Jr. And Jalen Brown picks up Damian Lee. And Damian Lee says, wait a second, this is not what's supposed to happen. Where is Robert Williams? Aha, he's over here. Hey, Otto Porter Jr., you go and set that screen, all right? So Damian Lee's going to peel back. Like, all right. And here he's pointing and say, hey, it's your turn. You do it. Otto Porter says, fine, I'll come up and set this screen and try to force Robert Williams into the play. But Robert Williams counter switches and he says, hey, my guy's coming up. Someone pick him up. I'm not going to get that. I'm comfy on the couch over here. The Otto Porter Jr. is going to come up and set the screen. But in fact, Boston just wants Marcus Smart to be the one who's guarding Steph. So Robert Williams is not, I, I don't think he's going to even move from this spot. He says, I'm here. Deal with it. There he goes. The auto porter's coming up to set the screen. Marcus Smart is the one who picks him up. Steph says, fine, let's just do this. I'm still steaming mad. Good teamwork between auto porter Jr. and Steph. First, auto porter Jr. tries to angle the screen this way, so Steph can go this way. But the defender tries to shoot the gap hard to stop Steph from getting free. 
And as soon as he does, two things happen. One is that Steph reverses direction, so that's good. But Otto Porter Jr., he was screening this way, but then he just pivots around and now he's screening the other way. So good changing of the angle on this rescreen. So now Steph is going to be able to get free. Marcus Smart is expecting that something like this would happen. So he's pointing at this spot in the floor, I think. He's saying, hey, Time Lord, Robert Williams, you've got to be ready in case Steph gets by me on this side. So Robert Williams has to rotate. So it's exactly as Marcus Smart feared. Steph splits the defenders. This man is still trying to recover from Otto Porter's screen. Marcus Smart stepped up so Steph wouldn't try any shenanigans from the three-point line. So Steph splits everybody. And now Robert Williams is stepping up to try to stop Steph from going all the way to the basket. Steph can see this is happening. He knows there's a little bit of space right here at the elbow. And he says, you know, I can hit this shot and I don't want to have to beat Robert Williams at the rim. So Steph goes right to this open space. And this is a pretty hard shot, but Steph seems to think this is pretty easy. He just takes a one-handed running floater before Williams can even start to jump. He'd never be able to get this anyway. That's just such a beautiful shot. I know we take it for granted, but we got to appreciate Steph while he's still in the league. And that's it. And Steph's got to, instead of going nuts saying, I'm the man, he definitely has this kind of, yeah, that should have done that last play. That would have saved us a whole bunch of stress. Sorry, everybody. But I took care of business now. Here's a good view of the rescreen. Otto Porter Jr. was coming around to set a screen on this angle, but then he's going to shift over and rescreen on this side because Steph is reversing this gorgeous move to cross over. And then before Marcus Smart can get to him up at the three-point line, he just goes fast and splits the two defenders. And while he still has space between him and the defender, he just puts it up. Okay, next play. The Warriors pretty much need one stop, and then that should settle the game. They send out their maximum defense lineup. Andre Iguodala, Kavon Looney, Gary Payton II, Draymond Green, Andrew Wiggins. Really good defense and cooperation on this play. This play starts with Boston. We have a down screen from Marcus Smart. The Warriors just switch, GP2 switches. Draymond stays to meet the screener. No problem. Celtics have another down screen here. The Warriors say, we're happy to switch this too. Everyone in this lineup can switch with everybody else. Gary Payton the second switches to the, the cutter. Andrew Wiggins switches to the screener. No problem. Jalen Brown feels like he has an angle on Wiggins, so he's going to cut. Pass comes through. Draymond immediately rotates. That means that Robert Williams behind him can cut. So there is a sliver of an opportunity here, but Andrew Wiggins rotates back to meet the cutter and Draymond stays with Jalen Brown and Jalen Brown is just stopped. Another cutter comes through but Kevon Looney does a great job shadowing this person so no pass can come through. They need a reset. They try Jason Tatum out, out on the three-point line. GP2 harassing him. On this little loop action Jason Tatum does get a half step on GP2. But Draymond says, no problem. He switches and stays on the strong side post here to meet the drive. That means someone's open and it is Jalen Brown. So Jalen Brown is going to move into open space, but Andre sees that it's happening. Smart cuts through. Looney stays with Smart. Andre finally rotates in the air to Jalen Brown. He definitely does not want him to shoot a three, so he runs him off the three-point line try to force him to drive past him. He does. It looks like he's driven past Andre, right? But Gary Payton II is backing him up. So he's going to come over and stop the drive. The spacing and the Celtics play has gotten truly horrible. There are just three of them right under the basket. And now this is what Andre was talking about. He saw that last play, Jalen Brown did the Euro step. He's got the timing down because he put it into his computer brain playing against Jason Tatum, here's the Euro step coming, one step, two step to try to get around GP2. And Andre is tracking the whole thing. He says, as soon as Jalen Brown brings the ball to the right side, that means he has to bring it back to the left side in order to complete the Euro step. And so Andre the whole time is just waiting to put his hand right on the ball when it comes back from the right side. 
And there it is. He brought it back. Swipe down and beautiful. And everyone knows it. Andre pointing. Warriors ball. Steph sees it. Warriors ball. Lots of people are saying, this is Warriors ball. And there's Andre admiring his own hands, putting him in front of him and saying, oh my lord, thank you for blessing me with the mind to rhyme and two hype feet and these incredible hands that can steal. It reminds me of the celebration he did after he made that great game ending steal against Damian Lillard in the playoffs. <laughs> He's uh, really having an extended celebration of his awesome hands. Here's a play from a different angle. Andre runs him off the line. And then you can't see the Euro very well there, but we saw it from the other angle. One step brought the ball this way. And then the second step, he has to bring the ball back. That's just physics. And so Andre is completely teeing up, waiting for the ball to be shown on the left side. Bang! That's a nice shot. He just brought it straight down on the ball. Boink. The game dragged on a little bit, but the Warriors were almost mathematically assured of winning. Good, tough win on the road. Let's end this with one bonus play. The Warriors are counterattacking. They actually have numbers, and Wiggins is the open man. And in case you're ever wondering where the open man is, you can always look at Steph Curry. Here he is pointing at the open man. Pass it to Wiggins. But OPJ says, no one ever got fired for passing to Curry. So he wings the pass across, a little bit dangerous. Jason Tatum says, I can get this. And he dies for it, and he misses it. So Steph says, well, I know Wiggins is free, but let me just sh shoot this. He shoots it, holds the form. No. But instead of continuing to hold the form, it's going to be a 50-50 ball because this ball is bouncing really far out. So it's just a race between him and Robert Williams to see who can reach this ball first. And Steph just whacks it out of Williams' hand. Beautifully, it goes right to him. Steph is now extremely open. He just calibrated his previous shot. But he's got a pretty good chance of making this shot. He shoots it, ball is here, but he knows how it felt going out of his hand. So he is already starting to turn away. He's still giving it one last peek. Ball's still about halfway there, but he knows it's pretty much in the can. Now completely done with it. I'm done with that shot. That was a good shot. You all enjoy the suspense of what's happening. I've seen how this movie ends and Steph is running away and the ball is still not in the basket, but it is. And that was a three that in some sense really did settle the game. Steph Curry, happy with the way things have gone. He's going up for a body bump with Gary Payton II. And there is some backstory about this because viewers will remember that during the famous Steph uh, teeing up the ref celebration, he body bumped GP2 into oblivion. He just vaporized him with the body bump. GP2 was not ready for the level of force that Steph Curry was bringing to the body bump. But this time, GP2 braced himself, went up hard. Here he comes. Look at this form. GP2 leading with the knee. All right, that's, and the elbow, he's, he knows what's good for him. He doesn't want to hurt Steph, but he also doesn't want to be uh, disintegrated like the last time. Bong, okay, that's pretty good contact. He is fully braced, I like this. This is crash position he's got. Braced for contact with Steph, taking the full brunt of it with his leg. Nice cushioning. Okay, he's still looking like he's gonna have a pretty rough landing. He's got one leg down, he's got the other leg like this, his head is here, he's got one arm like this and the other arm like that. He still might be headed for an unpleasant meeting with the ground. Oh, he lands with one leg and he pulls it out. 